River State Crisis. Welcome back to my channel. We are going to be talking on River State politics today. My beautiful people, you know that for more than one month, he has been battled, protests, you know, here and there in River State. Wiki uh, Gang and the sitting governor Gang, they have been fighting, going to court. You know, everything has been happening in River State recently. So, my people, welcome back to my channel. If you are seeing me for the first time, my name is Joyce Anyangu. Please, guys, as you watch, subscribe to this channel. And those that have been watching and they have subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate every one of you. Thank you. So, guys, I want us to watch the interview in Arise TV between the uh, anal uh, the Arise analysis with Mr. Ekpe. You know, let's just listen and hear what he has to talk about all this you know fighting here and there protest here and there in river state so my people let's listen and i will come back and speak my own opinion thank you state allegations of corruption electoral malpractice and growing tensions between the governor's administration and opposition factions have further deepened the divide Policy analyst and political commentator Jake Ekpele now joins us to provide perspectives to the unfolding drama in River State. Good morning, J Mr. James Ekpele. Good to have you on the morning show today. Good morning, and uh, my first time on the morning show on wow. the weekend. Wow, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. I mean, it's nice having you on the weekend I've edition. I've been on the weekdays, but this is absolutely, weekend. Absolutely, absolutely. This yeah. is weekend. Good to have you. All right, let's talk uh, development in Thank River you. State. Uh, a lot of people will say that it is rivers of trouble or rivers of crisis, and, and, and the crisis is, is endless. What are your thoughts, given that almost every day there's no, new trouble? And now we're talking about the court judgment that is um, uh, basically you know, asking the governor to represent uh, the budget for 2024. We're in October, <laughs> two, month, two more months to go. But then a lot of people are also saying that who will he represent it to, given the fact that the judgment didn't specifically um, return those who are said to have left the PDP party and therefore they have abdicated their seats. What are your thoughts on this? I think I'll put it the other way around. Uh, it's, uh, it's the events that is happening in River State, the rivers people are not uh, people of crisis or people that is known for troublemaking or uh, spreading trouble. However, there are individuals, uh, politicians, who are desperate to grab power, and therefore they have tried the ballot box uh, trying to manipulate the ballot box uh, in order to lay hold on power. And now they have moved one notch higher to manipulating the legal structures, uh, therefore throwing the entire state and obviously the country into what is seen as constitutional crisis. Uh, however, Peace will always prevail as long as the people are united. And in this case, the people of River State are united. Uh, they're solid, solid in their conviction, uh, very focused in making sure that nobody, and I mean nobody, will move the state and her people into a political logjam. What they are doing is temporary. What is permanent is the resolve of the people not to give in, not to throw in the towel by holding on and focusing and making sure 
that we support uh, the sitting government to provide good governance. Um, it's unfortunate uh, that uh, those who are behind this uh, uh, melodramatic or political uh, logjam are just shamefully trying to push the state into a state of anarchy. Uh, but I can guarantee you that the people of River State, uh, which I'm very proud to be uh, an indigent, we are people of peace. We are people of, uh, we are smart people, and we are determined that uh, peace will reign, whether they like it or not. These are enemies of progress. They are enemies of the people. Uh, if an individual with his group can sit in a place and decide that they will hold the destiny of the state and determine what happened and what doesn't happen, that's unbecoming of anyone that calls himself or herself a leader. Therefore, it's unfortunate that the judiciary uh, is throwing themselves into this ring of trouble. But all I know is that lies varies. Truth is constant. And at the end of the day, the people will win, not the politician or a particular individual who feels that the state is his and the entire resources of the state belongs to him. We have seen this playbook over and over and over again. Let him go back to history. The people who try to uh, lead by this kind of hook and crook never succeed at the end of the day. Now, my brother, what amazes me is the fact that an individual will lead and establish what would have been seen as a, a legacy that would thrive and promote his leadership potentials. And that individual will sit down and want to wipe out his legacy with just constant trouble. That is unbecoming of a leader. And history will never be kind to those who wants to suffocate the people of River State. Let them go and consult history. We have never failed. This time around, we will not fail. Now, Mr. Apelli, I would like us, you know, to look at the implications, you know, of this appeal court ruling, because the judge ruled that um, the governor's withdrawal of the counter affidavit suit to challenge the suit instituted by the Amawule led lawmakers to be recognized as valid members of the House is a self inflicted mistake, you know, that cannot be redeemed because the governor actually withdrew that suit, you know, challenging the validity of Ama, uh, the Amewule-led Ama faction as members of the House of Assembly. Now, you recall that the governor did that after the mediation from President Bola Tinumbu, but, you know, then peace was not achieved and we went back to this um, issue of this crisis. So now that the court has ruled, do you think there should be perhaps another intervention by the president, you know, following this ruling? Well, I, I'm not a lawyer, but um, I don't have an IQ of a mushroom not to know that you cannot institute legality on top of illegality. These 27 lawmakers, by constitutional provision, which everybody in this country knows, are totally and absolutely illegal. They are no longer existing as long as uh, the constitution and the political uh, definition is defined by those who truly know political science. They are no longer existing. And so he cannot represent a, a budget before an entity that is termed illegal. As far as we are concerned, and as far as the constitution is concerned, in spite of all sorts of private interpretation, the law is clear. These 27 members are no longer members of the House of Assembly. That's what the law has instituted. However, this manipulation of legal structure, provisions, uh, and constitutional manipulation of individuals just because they have just discovered that they have made a mistake, period. There is nothing like Amo Emewule led uh, a House of Assembly. 
they have declared themselves uh, illegal by decamping from the political party that ushered them into power. So where and who is he going to present the budget or represent the budget? To an entity that is not in existence? It's not possible. Therefore, um, let them keep manipulating the laws. Let them keep manipulating judges that they can manipulate. The people will stand by what is legally and morally uh, seen as a precedent. Because we need to be careful. Because, you know, this set of uh, uh, politicians that will keep manipulating the laws and the state assembly and, and the executive arm and the judiciary for their own personal benefit. We need to name them and shame them and put a stop to it. You know, there is nobody where he is going to present any budget to, you know. Uh, otherwise, that judgment should also address the issue of the constitutionality of these individuals. And if they are truly constitutionally established, then the governor has every legal right and authority to represent the budget. I will not sit here and endorse illegality. And uh, you cannot, like I said, you cannot try to undo illegality with a manipulated legal pro provisions. That's my personal opinion. All right, Mr. Apili, I, I get your point, uh, but then talking legality and morality, a lot of people will wonder uh, what is legal or moral in the governor trying to run the state with just three or four members or, or three or four lawmakers. Um, uh, that sort of uh, uh, what people call shenanigan has been condemned. Uh, in other parts of the country. Edo, you know, comes to mind, for example. And, and people will say, yes, if you say that 26 or 27 lawmakers have defected, but then what happens? For how long are you going to run the state with just three or four members of the House of Assembly? Unfortunately so. Um, but the same people that are... <laughs> the same people that are saying this had in their past and in the history of their governance, manipulated this kind of thing and held it on to their own benefit. However, that's not a reason for the sitting governor to do what anybody can, can see as illegal. But how, uh, like, like they kept saying, uh, we need political solution, which I don't believe supersedes prov uh, constitutional provision. Uh, you know, but the point is simple. The situation right now makes it practically impossible for us to, for the sitting governor to do otherwise. Let the truth be told. The current situation created by these same people who are seen as trying to correct it, you know, uh, uh, it makes it practically impossible for him to do otherwise. There is nothing, okay, are we going to, is he going to shut down government? Just because certain group of people sitting somewhere wants to manipulate and strangle the destiny of the entire state, is he going to shut down completely and not run government? That also will spell anarchy, you know. So it is a very troubling situation, my brother. It is a very stormy situation, you know, and right now, I think the governor is doing the best that he can do, uh, bearing in mind that we don't have to shut down governance. And that's exactly what these individuals are looking for. And I guarantee you they cannot get it because the will of the people cannot be bent. Uh, we are very resilient people. We are true Democrats. The average reverse man is a person and people, we are persons and people of civility. And we will continue to do what is right, both in the eyes of the law and in the eyes of the people. And so that's the, that's the situation that Fowara finds himself. And I want to say this categorically clear. Anyone who knows me, whether it's Fowara or any other person, Jake Epele, I will come and defend that individual. It doesn't matter who the person is. 
What matters is what the person is doing to serve the people. And I've said it times without number. If Governor Fubara is listening to me, serve the people. If you serve the people, the politicians cannot touch you. Stay focused and provide governance and obey the rule of law, not when it pleases a certain element and group of people that wants to use the so-called their own definition of rule of law to manipulate the people. That does not count. The people have resolved that governance will continue in River State and peace will thrive whether they like it or not. People like me will not keep quiet and several others who are speaking, we will continue to speak through to power. They don't need to like our face. I don't need anybody or anything from anybody. I will continue to do what I, I, I know that I'm doing, not for myself, but for the benefit of the entire reverse people. We are true Democrats and no one can cause us to do otherwise. Oh, very well said, Mr. Pele. And talking about the rule of law, the F City Minister Yesumbuike is insisting that the governor should follow the court verdict, you know, in order to bring peace to the state. But then some analysts are worried that if he does that, he will be impeached, you know, in a, just a matter of time. So which brings to the fore the issue of stronghold of godfathers in Nigerian politics. How do we begin to disassemble this? How do we begin to pull down this stronghold? Let me borrow, you know, from the religious parlance. That, that, exactly. Well, the thing, the thing about um, Godfatherism and um, political manipulations of structures, you will keep doing what you're doing until one day what you're doing will work against you. Whether anybody likes it or not, the pendulum has swung to the other side. Uh, whether anybody wants to uh, manipulate or not, there is no longer, that issue of the so-called godfatherism in Potakot has been broken. The so-called structure has been shattered and it is no longer business as usual. Therefore, uh, I stand here, I, I, I sit here to absolutely and totally condemn godfatherism. People say, well, you're not a politician and there will always be godfatherism. It's not true. A straightforward individual who has served his people and served well, there is no way you can be, the power can be taken from you. I mean, we saw an example of someone that is described as an uh, inexperienced politician, but who had strong personal values winning election in Benue State, and that's the governor of Benue State. Who is his go political godfather? He never had any. And he emerged because the people believed in him. The same thing is happening today. You know, whether anybody likes it or not, let these people that are trying to assert themselves and empower themselves to... to manipulate the people. Let them come today and conduct a free and fair election against uh, the sitting governor. They will be disgraced because what they have done have popularized uh, Fubara, not because of what he can do, not because of what he's doing, but because the people knows that they are trying to suffocate him. They are trying to make him do otherwise. And he's not willing. Let me tell you the truth. Um, and I want to be very uh, upfront with you. Yes, I come from the same place with Fubara. That's not why sometimes I speak in his favor. It's simply because I know the man. I've sat down with him. There is innate intention and honesty in his heart to do what is right. The problem is that they see him as a threat to a, their conduit pipe of, of siphoning the resources of River State. Let the truth be told. And he's resisting them, he's standing for the people, and the people are standing for him. If not the fact that, one, God is with this young man, and the people are with him, 
he would have been taken out long time ago. But they cannot. They took him for granted, and now that they are seeing that history is on his side, the people are on his side, politics and political landscape uh, is on his side, and he will continue to win. You know, Fubara eventually will be seen as a hero of democracy because what he's doing is not fighting for himself. He's fighting for the people. And, and let me also underscore this. Fumara is not interested in the office as much as he's interested in serving the people, period. Whether anybody likes it or not, that's my observation, and I've seen it in him. I can tell by looking at the lips of a man what is in his heart. Truly and really, he's not interested in all the shenanigans. Okay. Well, I mean, that, that's, that's good to know, Mr. Ipele, but um, I, I'm sure that you followed the warning uh, uh, by the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, uh, that if the crisis, the current crisis in River State is not uh, tackled fully, uh, that it might take us, um, that it might be a reminiscent of the wild, wild west uh, bad old days, you know, uh, of the First Republic. Uh, and so, in order to avert that, there is a school of thought that says that if the president, Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu, sits down today with four people, that there will be progress. And the four people mm -hmm. that that school of thought uh, has mentioned, uh, essentially, is the sitting governor, uh, Sim Fubara, and then three of the previous governors, past governors in River State, uh, uh, Mr. Peter Odili, uh, Rotimi Amichi, and Yesom Wiki. So the school of thought says that if President Ashwa Jibola Metinubu sits down with those four people, that a lasting solution will come out of that intervention. The president has intervened before, as you are aware. But do you think that if he gives this um, suggestion a chance, that truly rivers can find peace? Yes, I, I listened to Tony Cole, my good friend, uh, and I... I, I it makes sense, uh, his, his postulations, uh, you know. But I think I'll add one more person to that list. Rufus Ada George. Uh, these are living governors, uh, and many of them served us well. Uh, I, I, I think we might get a political uh, and constitutional solution, because I've always been an advocate of, first, the Constitution, two, then we can talk about solution. Uh, so I will add one more to that list, and that's Rufus Ada George. Why? Because these are leaders who have led the state and, and brought meaningful development and exited when it was their time without trying to destroy the state. You know? uh, and so, yes, it, it, it makes a lot of sense uh, if the president... Uh, will be willing to toe that line, uh, be putting them in the room, and him as the father of the nation, and the father to, to virtually all of them, you know, he can sit down with them and look them in the eye and say, look, gentlemen, let's look for lasting solution, you know, and I think that's the way to go, uh, especially, especially, uh, uh, the likes of uh, Rotimi Amechi uh, and, and his brother, uh, Wike, uh, you know, th those two, uh, and then the sitting governor, uh, uh, um, um, uh, Dr. Peter Odili, and, and like I said, I'll add one more to that list, and that's Rufus Adajo. They are, they are, especially uh, Rufus and, and, and Dr. Peter Odili, they are leaders who led the state and brought a lot of peace, you know. Uh, and you, you can trace the history of these two individuals, Amechi and Wike, from Peter Odili. Peter Odili can be seen as their boss. And so uh, bringing all of them into one room and uh, giving them a, a sense of direction uh, will be uh, the way to go. You know, the, the, the political landscape of our dear River State cannot be destroyed by individuals who have instinct 
for self-destruct. Uh, we, we, we will not allow them, you know, because sometimes, my brother, when you look at these people, even the way and manner they speak, uh, in spite of the platform that they are provided uh, to speak, you begin to wonder, it's, you know, we, we talk, we just celebrated Mental World Health Day. You know, you begin to wonder, uh, are they really, is, is something wrong? Are they driven by the spirit of alcoholism or drugs? Because sometimes what they say doesn't make sense. It does not make sense, whether it's intellectual sense, moral sense, or legal sense. You know, and many of them are well-educated, you know. Uh, so it, it, I, I think we might find a solution uh, if, if the president is committed to it and if he knows he's going to be absolutely neutral and play the role of a statesman and a father of the nation, he can find solution. He can find solution. Now, the reason why the previous arrangement did not work was that period, previous arrangement was a bit one-sided and I don't think it was something that was discussed by everybody and arrive at a solution. Rather, I saw something that looks like an imposition. You know, this is what I want. You do it or you face the consequence. You know, and when you're trying to negotiate and you're adding threat to that negotiation, you, you can get a temporary relief. The person walks out because he respects you, but the implementation will be but very, very difficult uh, for my beautiful people. <clears throat> Welcome back to my channel to the politics news today. So, hey, <laughs> we have heard, we have watched Mr. Epere or uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Drake. He has spoken very, very well, but everything that has been happening in river state personally i believe that is wicked that is causing all these problems in river state you know everybody knows that it's wicked that put fervora in that position along the line it's like the sitting governor now turn around and say no i will not accept everybody know what is godfatherism when i put you there i'm your godfather i put you there you make returns to me you understand you make returns to me you give me i have to control even that you as in that position i put you there i fix you there i have to control you i have to be telling you what to do i will be I will be at the site or I will be in the site telling you what to do which means indirectly I'm the one sitting there but I am sitting there through you that is what the only problem we have in Nigerian politics if this godfatherism will stop because that is the main issue the main crisis that is happening in River State because if the sitting governor agree with uh, Wiki, they have not been having these problems. Everything has been going well and well. All this crisis, all this problem would not happen in River State. Trust me. And the way it is, it's like the River State people, they want the uh, Fobara, you know, they want him because he has been ru uh, ruling them very well. But in the other hand, the Godfather don't want him to sit in that place. That is why you see this problem has been going up and down, fighting even the local government at a, 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 a chairman election was, <coughs> was problem fighting burning places so my beautiful people i don't know what to say uh, you have watched the video if you have anything to say because for me i believe that everything has that has been happening in this river state is in one person's hands 
which is the godfather that put Mr. Febra or Febra or that the governor in that seat. He has been the one manipulating everything in River State. And you guys know the way that guy is so desperate, so selfish. We watched an interview when they, I think it was that the interview that uh, the, uh, I think Dino, with Dino. All of us will watch the t interview with Dino. What Dino said that this guy is a very selfish and self centered person. Excuse the only thing of his own self. So that is what that has been happening in River State. So you have heard what Mr. Jack has said. He has analyzed everything and he believes that Fabra is doing the right thing. It's just that. He don't want people to oppress him. He don't want people to control him. He want to rule the state accordingly. That is why you see they have been fighting him here and there. So and so they have been oppressing him, try to remove him from that seat. Anyway, my people. So now in River State, we they have to come, come of wicked, come of Febra, Febra, uh, the uh, Febra or the Febra. I don't know the name. The sitting uh, governor. Mr. Jack here, he has said that he is supporting 100% the sitting governor that is doing everything that he has the interest of people, River State people at hand. And that is what we want. If River State people want him to rule them, then who is Godfather that will come and put a structure or that will come and say, no, it will not work. So that is Nigerian politics politics that is not transparent politics that they only want their own pocket because i don't really know what is the problem with wiki and this sitting governor let wiki come out and explain to us let them not just be putting it up you know the, the main problem is under the root is under they are just planting on top other roots thank you very much my beautiful people if you guys have watched this video to this time Thank you. Please subscribe, share, like this video. Click at the notification bell so that whenever I post a video, you will be the first to be notified. Thank you and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye for now.